Monkey Moon. A Rocket League player who has achieved the most impressive results out of anyone else in the Rocket League scene. He has achieved everyone's ultimate dream as a pro, winning worlds. And he has done this twice. Whilst being in Rocket League's most competitive state, truly making him the GOAT of the eSport. And I will be showing you how Monkey Moon became the player he is today. To start this journey, we must go all the way back to 2018, when Monkey Moon, at 15 years of age, started getting attention for being the number one PS4 player in the world for 1v1. This attention caught the eye of a 1v1 show match host, Johnny Boy, and he ended up letting Monkey Moon play in a few of his show matches. His first opponent was against Ahmad, a well-known now retired pro who would end up having a great career down the line. So this was a very strong opponent and Monkey Moon did end up taking him down in a reverse sweep hit, which was a very good result and he even got some money for this. If Johnny Boy ever found out how to contact him, that is. There's literally no way to contact this man at all. You try message him, he doesn't have any account on anything. But this is where people really got to know Monkey Moon, as he'll go on to be in more of these show matches, playing players such as Scrub Killer. However, this was just the first time Monkey Moon was in the spotlight. There is actually a live stream on Monkey Moon's YouTube channel from back in 2016, where he was just playing some twos with a friend. This was pretty funny to watch, and it just shows he's been playing the game since basically the beginning. <laughs> Now, moving on, we can see he participated in some small tournaments here and there. And during this time, Monkey Moon had teamed with Zensus and Nolly. Nolly now being a very well-known player, most notably winning a major with Gen G. Now, this team participated in a tournament called the Rival Esports, in which this Xeno Moon squad, as they called themselves, won, beating a very strong flip side tactics, which had Cookser, Mystic, and Speed at the time. You can see they also got a decent $700 prize pool from this, and it would be Monkey Moon best win yet on record. Now we move on into Monkey Moon's first appearance in the RLCS, or more specifically the RLRS, which is a lower league than RLCS, but still very competitive and a good chance for unknown players to prove themselves. And with the Xeno Moon squad, they managed to qualify for the RLRS Season 7 play-in in Europe. Now in the main event, it didn't go too well for them, but they did beat Mark by 8's team. And this is interesting because later, Monkey Moon would end up joining this team and be alongside Clayx and and Mark by 8. This team would now come into Season 8 of RLRS and end up getting a respectable 5th place in this tournament. And this 5th place would be enough to get this team signed by an org. This org ended up being BDS, a new org to the scene who would end up being Monkey Moon's home even to this day. After this move, something just snapped for this team as they go in and win the European RLRS of Season 9. Oh, Monkey Moon will try oh. again and he does! giving them a nice $13,000 prize pool, but more importantly, automatically qualifies BDS for the Season X full split. And this would be the start of Monkey Moon's online era. Now, this was during the lockdown era in 2020, so all RLCS tournaments had been turned to online tournaments. And this, of course, means no international tournaments took place. So this Season X would be hosted completely online. But just before we get into that, Monkey Moon played in the Spring Series in Europe, and this didn't go too well for this team. And it seems after after this, BDS would make a roster change. They would bring in Extra in place of Clay X, and this would prove to be a very good change for this squad, as coming into Season X now, BDS win the first full regional, beating the likes of Team Vitality. They would then carry this momentum and win the second full regional as well, where they take down Vitality again. Although in the third regional, Vitality do get their revenge and take the win here. But this being said, the real main event has now arrived, the full major. Now we started off with a Swiss bracket in which BDS dominate their way through, getting first seed here coming into playoffs. They start with not too much trouble against Barcelona, taking them down in four games. But coming into the top four, we get into best of sevens, and it gets a little shaky for BDS, as this series would end up going down to the wire. And off the wall, here comes Ixo in to put pressure on. It's onto the backboard, maintains up for it, looks for the shot, oh. and scores. It's a good read from Arju, and now Matein off the wall, and a oh. shot from Ixo sneaks behind the defense. And BDS has to reverse sweep at a best of seven to make it to the finals, but they'll start things off hot here. Into the corner, Arju off the bounce and down into Ixo. Oh! The goalie just one. Board defense clears it fine. Mark with a missed extra. The fall flanking follow up. Monkey Moon sends the shot in. The at this point, I think they're happy to. I don't. I don't. I don't. If I'm by Tally right now, I don't. But BDS get the job done. Extra. Through the sky, kept it high, but lost control in Arju. We'll get it to Matane on the wall. Matane with a miss. Here's Mark by eight. Is that the oh. miss that secures it? Oh. Mark by eight off the crossbar. Oh. And after that series, BDS find themselves in the finals against who else but Team Vitality. Doing 
Um, for, I'm sure that we're going to see a more consistent performance from them already. Extra, going to test them. BDS will slowly look to starve out. As long as that one booming clear cannot happen for Reno Vitality, they'll continue oh, to hook wow. across Monkey Moon. Oh! Top corner! It looks like BDS even know how to play the economical game as well. Mark oh! with the demo. It's really impressive to bounce back against the team who have been their kryptonite this season and to come back from a three-game deficit, but they've got to do it all over again. Territorially compared to the last game. Now Kadon finds Alpha and final third. Oh! oh, that is a beauty. They are going for it. Vitality's awareness absolutely holding it together. Oh, okay, Alpha went out late. His extra! Oh! Yes, but Extra's got his hands on the ball. It's back to Alpha. That was the last bounce that they've got to play with. Into the middle, but away! BDS oh, would take it this time, making BDS and Monkey Moon major champions. This momentum would end up carrying BDS throughout the rest of the season as they go back to back to back major champions, taking a massive streak and showing their true dominance here in Europe. This is truly the era of Monkey Moon. Monkey Moon now finds himself somewhere incredible. The European Championship with a $400,000 prize ball. This is where you get to show all your hard work you've been putting in throughout the season. With only six teams invited to this event, it goes straight into a playoff bracket. But of course, it was clear which two would end up in the finals. BDS versus Team Vitality, a rivalry which has gone on all season. But unfortunately for BDS, this was not their day. A tragic loss for Monkey Moon here after having such a dominant season up until now. It had felt like this was theirs to win, but it was not meant to be. But now we exit the online era and begin the RLCS of 2021 to 2022, with some very solid regional results leading to yet another major win for BDS. Proving now that they can also tackle international competition as they take down NRG here. However, coming into the winter split of this season, we start to see some inconsistent results in the first three regionals, following by a bit of a disappointing major for BDS. These subpar results would cause BDS to make another roster change, this time dropping Mark by 8 for another Frenchman in Seiko, an up-and-coming player in the scene who looked to have some very high potential. And Seiko did not initially disappoint, as BDS do win their first regional with this squad, and they do continue to perform well in the other two regionals. But coming into the major, things fell a bit flat for this team, getting a very disappointing result in this spring major. Now BDS have to sort things out quickly, as they just have a couple months before the World Championship. They do still come into this tournament as the second seed though, which means they get a fairly easy group coming into this tournament. As they take down Renegades and version 1 with relative ease, they now find themselves in the playoff bracket against Carmine Corp, which would end up being a close series. For them. Oh, oh, that's oh, that's oh. Go. This is where they could be so dangerous. He chooses right this oh. time. Not able to keep up that aggression. They're not able to get those follow-up shots, but Monkey Moon looking for a follow-up on that. Doesn't need it. Oh. But Itachi is there for him. These demos are going to serve the kill. Oh Kcorp off the face. BDS on Utopia with a two-goal lead. Astral not quite connecting there. The early flip reset. And now off the back wall, there's another chance. This Monkey Moon again. Just by a second, you leave yourself completely stranded. It could be four from the kickoff. Astral ain't going to miss that. On both sides, I believe. But Nolly is the one to clean things up. He's the sweeper right now for Keiko. He's also getting all the flip resets. Oh, oh, Astral's coming in. ADS, they know this is the team that can just give up in their minds. That one's over oh, the top. It's four. But Keiko clears it all the way downfield. It was a clear, and it was a huge clear from Attach. No! Oh, 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 back at them. Monkey Moon is so fast, but there has been a double commit. Astral is going for Seiko, but he just about shakes himself free. Oh, BDS. Yes. Nolly. Oh, never mind. Oh, but oh, my God, we're coming forward. Monkey Moon has to be win. And does beat Nolly. And it's for Team BDS. They just have to get control of this ball. Even better, they can get it in the back of the net. It's not going to happen there, so the ball stays high. Astro, the good clearance extra is there as well. Nolly's waiting for it. That's all he can do. It's time to it is up against Baco. Does he have the ability? Does he have the ability? He's not there. He, no. he keeps it up even more. Nolly! 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 keeps it up in the air again. He's still there. Up against Baco. Baco just puts his foot on the brake for a second and slows things. BDS do take the win, however, and now find themselves against Furia in the semi-finals, which after a shaky start, ends up being a very comfortable series for BDS. But now, all of a sudden, BDS are in the grand finals. They must face an NA squad in G2 to win Worlds, and they absolutely destroy them. Series of Rocket League here this year. Ooh. And BDS gonna start off strong. They wanna get to the ball first, they go. Quick reader on the corner, Hearts! Oh! Oh! Unavailable, totally for G2 to work with. Monkey Moon, slight touch in front, and another goal! Cement them as Rocket League's best. 
and the guy they added this season, Seiko. Well, hang on a second. EDS, though, have weathered the storm, and now Monkey Moon. It. He's got a wide open net. Missed. No one from G2's there. They went for the dunk. Now Monkey Moon's down. Pass field. Field. Oh, pass in front. Shot. Goal! It could all end here on Wasteland. Oh. And BDS! To mention BDS now 15 and 1 when they're scoring first. And now they're going to get another one. G2 deflated. And they've got nothing. BDS, one more. Oh. Goal! Monkey Moon is now a world champion. He has done what every pro strives to do, and he has done it at his first ever international championship. Seiko has also massively proved himself here, putting up a great performance. He was definitely a good choice. Fans, give it up for your winners and new Rocket League champions of the world, Team B. Now, coming into the RLCS 2022 to 2023 season, it really felt for me like the competition had increased quite dramatically compared to last season, especially in Europe. And you can see this affect BDS massively as they have a very disappointing start to the season where you can see them not even make the fall and winter split majors. This ultimately led to a late season roster change coming into the third split where BDS would pick up Rise to replace Extra. And this was the best decision BDS could have made as they claw their way back up in the third split, getting some very good results. And this now means they have made it to the spring major and they need to do well here in order to make it to Worlds. So this means a lot for this team. And fortunately for BDS, they had a great performance in this tournament, running all the way through the bracket and getting all the way to the finals. However, there was another team coming into the last split who also made a roster change. This was Team Vitality, who had now signed the superstar Zen. And with Zen, they looked unstoppable. And this would show as the team in the finals with BDS would end up being Team Vitality and things did not go the way of BDS. Vitality were just too strong here, but a second place in this major is in no way a bad result for BDS, and they would still come into Worlds with a lot of confidence. High with no boost though, he does find that bat board. It was tipped there by Ahmad. Seiko passes, that is selfless. BDS, the world champions of the MVP under the corner. Oh. Monkey Moon roster, they wanted to get these tight situations locked up and secured. And a great shot from oh. Monkey Moon, what follow up. Position. He's gonna wanna cut this play, or at least force something to rise. Three ball, double tap! And there's a hit off, straight off the ceiling. Is there's a demo in that! And that's gonna be the goal! However, after a good run through Worlds, getting all the way to another Grand Finals, they must face Team Vitality again. And this team was just too good. Zen was just on a rampage and absolutely left no mercy for BDS here as they 4-0 sweep them here in the finals. But on the upside, Monkey Moon has yet again made it to another Grand Finals. And even though he didn't win this one, it is still a massive achievement for them. So by no means was this a bad result. Now, just after Worlds, there was a tournament called Gamers 8, which is a massive tournament with a $2 million prize pool, and BDS would get all the way to the semi-finals here before losing out to Rule 1. Not really too much to speak about here, but I thought it was worth mentioning as it was a decent result for them. And this would be the only big tournament before the next RLCS, the RLCS of 2024. BDS have now formed a new roster built of course around Monkey Moon. This roster consists of Exotic, coming previously from Kami Corp, who had great success, even winning a major on that team, and then a new rookie to the RLCS scene, Indrali, who seemed to have a lot of potential, but he has yet to prove himself on the big stage. At the start of this season, BDS did perform to a high level, consistently getting top four at regionals, but there was one team they just couldn't beat, Exotic's former team, Kami Corp, who had now picked up Atto and Rise to go alongside Vatira, and they were looking super strong. But BDS did look promising coming into the first major, although things didn't end up going the way they would have hoped here. BDS did manage to get through Swiss fairly comfortably, however it all fell apart in the quarterfinals as they come up against NA's best in G2. BDS did start off very well to begin with in this series, but it all just fell apart very quickly for them, and in the end end up losing to a very poor touch from Monkey Moon to give G2 the win in Game 6. But unfortunately for BDS, things only seem to get worse here, as in their first regional back, they 
they get upset by Williams Resolve in the top eight of the regional, getting their worst result yet in a regional. But BDS do not let this get to them. And the very next regional, they destroy everyone, taking a very comfortable regional win. Spot into the back of the net. Thankfully for BDS, they are awake in defense. Monkey Moon gets the flip reset. Wants one more. Bullets his way. It's like throwing a dart. But not only that, they then go and win the next regional after that also. A complete turnaround from this team, and they were looking great coming into Major 2, with people now calling them favorites to win. However, yet again here, BDS cannot break the top 8 curse and lose 4-0 to Gentlemates at London. At this point, I was very confused to what was wrong with this team, and maybe they just couldn't get it together on a land stage for some reason. Now, in between the second Major and Worlds, there was a little bit of a gap. So in between that gap, we had the Esports World Cup, a new tournament formerly named Gamers 8, and this is a great chance for teams to get good practice in before Worlds. BDS were one of the teams invited to this tournament, and out of nowhere, BDS popped off as they make a run through everyone, and eventually even beat a very strong Falcons on their home turf, with the whole BDS, crowd against them. They are knocking on this door, oh my and God. Team Falcons have kept it shut. So oh! Did he find the angle? And you run into a trolley. Drawly across, Exotics in the air, demo into goal! The lanes, Monkey Moon diving back, uh-oh, a missed touch from Falcons! Exotic runs away with a free goal! To the point where Team BDS just have weak clears out now. Exotic's been invited in, the backboard's found, Monkey Moon's there, it's on target, what? it'll trickle in for Monkey Moon! They have not been able to break through him, and he forces another 50 out. Monkey Moon with the shot! Oh my god! BDS seem to thrive when the crowd is against them. But now, BDS have gained a massive amount of confidence coming into Worlds. And Monkey Moon is back to show his skill yet again on the world stage. Starting off with their Swiss run, it was a very good run, only dropping to the very strong Falcons, who are definitely one of the favorites coming into this tournament. G2 is also one of these favorites. However, BDS get the chance to silence both these favorites, as after winning their Swiss tiebreaker, they face G2 in the upper quarterfinals. And finally, BDS show what they are capable of. Takes a 50, Dan zero boost. You can see Beast Mode throwing himself back, and it might just be open. But they found it downfield. Trolley has support. Fast. They're lunging right now, G2. It's not oh. pretty. That's all. Here we go. It's just going to be BDS again. Now, Beast Mode now senses his opportunity. There's the 50. Atomic retreating back. The flip was awkward, and Monkey Moon. It's a great 50 again. No one ready for the midfield. No one wants to be there. It's got to take a huge play. Trolley oh. off the a little tip, but now the shot comes in. It's saved. Monkey Moon has fallen. Now, BDS have taken down NA's best, and now they move on to the Falcons, who had beaten them previously in Swiss. But BDS have also beaten the Falcons before, and they know this. Again, picking a spot. Rawat says no, but the Annette is open, and Trolley bounces it home. BDS here from both teams. Oh, but BDS, they're trying to force the issue. Good demo from Monkey Moon. Well, wow, no big 50. Monkey Moon, killers, no moves. There's the flick. Is it going to be a goal? Oh, oh, he tried to win it. Exotic, got it. Win out of Exotic. That's dangerous. And in. Dominance here in this series. Reassert control as Monkey Moon got through. Can it go through? It does. And they are charging all the way through. They are charging oh, through the Falcons. Oh, straight to Mawaz, but the clearance goes downfield. And Monkey Moon's got to slow Falcons down. Oh, Drawley, hard! And he scores, everybody! TRK has to maintain control here. He gets demoed. Exotic! Final 10 seconds. Killers on top of this one, but it is sent away from BDS. Mawaz, once more. Falcons, one more. Double. BDS have now found themselves in the Grand Finals at Worlds, and this will be Monkey Moon's third time getting here in a row. Now, in the finals, they have a rematch on their hands. They have to beat G2 again to make BDS and Monkey Moon two times world champions, and they did not disappoint. Over time, Monkey Moon couldn't get it past. There's Fossa! Oh, BDS not able to break them down. It's back out again. The Drolly! <laughs> not gonna get there, so he didn't need Drolly. Well communicated there from BDS, ceiling reset, Drali looks oh. for the basketball! Oh. Exotic takes the ball up, he avoids Daniel, oh. top corner! Drali leaves it yet again, BDS communicating the oh. situation so well, oh. top corner! He could have called fake on that, there it is true, but it's not a good one! Online, who are trying to send him energy, and BDS go ahead by two, it's an aerial shot! Line. The trust that BDS have got in each other, the fake shots, and it's oh. in! Two. 
Unable to really get a move on before the ball was once again. BDS is Monkey Moon. Top Garden. Low boost. Exotic low. Drolly boost. Drolly. Oh. No. Nearly catching BDS off guard. Drolly takes it to the air. Who dares challenge? You've got to go. Oh. It's exotic. Monkey Moon again with a breaker rotation. Brings Drolly into the play. Atomic misses. Oh, oh no. BDS have done it, and Monkey Moon will now go down in history for what he's achieved here, going back to back to back grand finals at Worlds, whilst having won two out of three of these, earning now $900,000 in prize money, he is truly the GOAT of Rocket League.